Hi, and welcome to another great episode of East Live Issues and Answers. My name is Mark Nickerson, East Live's first selectman. Thank you for spending a little time with us today. Uh, we have a great guest here, and I'll, uh, as always, want to start off with just a little bit of uh, town news, town activity, and um, um, kind of update you, kind of see where you're at, where we're at, and uh, and uh, and going forward where we're going to be. Um, we, it, we've had a great summer, and the weather continues to be awesome. It got a little humid in there in the middle, uh, but we're having great beach days. You know, with Labor Day comes the the calendar unofficial end to the summer, but great days will be before us coming in September, October. Don't, don't be a stranger downtown. Hit the beaches, hit the boardwalk, hit Main Street, and uh, come on down. We're, uh, we're uh, just so fortunate, so grateful to live in such a great town with so many great assets and great people. You know, one thing um, someone pointed out to me recently is, you know, when you walk on the boardwalk or downtown, people are so friendly. People say hi, which that's not always the case in New England. We got a bad rap in New England about uh, you know being cold and uh, not being very neighborly sometimes, but that's not the case in downtown Niantic or even up in the Flanders Way when we're out shopping. Come on, come on down to downtown and say hi to your neighbor and all the visitors. Uh, and that's part of the good news too. With Labor Day comes maybe a few less cars on our roadways and our highways, and maybe we can get around a little bit better with a little less frustration. Please keep in mind and keep your speeds. Uh, to a reasonable speed, um, you know, if we could, if we could all slow down in each other's neighborhood, we'll all be giving each other a better quality of life. Things going around in town, you know, ProTech music it continues. The music continues through Labor Day weekend on Friday nights. Um, so get on down Friday nights. Friday nights on Main Street is loaded with people. There's hundreds of people shoulder to shoulder with baby carriages and dogs on leashes and uh, uh, neighbors hanging out, going out to dinner and eating ice cream cones and listening to the music. Come on down for that. Farmer's Market, the Niantic Main Street Group, which is just an awesome group of um, merchants have all gotten together. Well, they're organizing that Farmer's Market. That's down on Method Street. If you haven't done it, get down there on a Thursday afternoon between 3 and 6. Every week tends to be a different theme. There's dog week and kid week and you know dessert week and, and all sorts of different things. But the great produce is still out there. It's locally grown and uh, is supporting our local farmers, our local merchants. That's important always, uh, and it's a great time to be down there. It's a great, it's a great little scene. There's a little some music going on down there, etc. Uh, music on McCook's uh, Beach every uh, Wednesday. In August, so if you're watching this in August, you're still in. It's uh, there's a Wednesday coming up. You have a chance to go see them. Uh, Wednesdays, uh, they set up the stage in the parking lot, and you set up your chair on the beach, and and it's just a really good scene. So, and they have different bands down there for that. And movie night starts in September up at McCook's. Family friendly movies uh, on a screen that they'll they'll put up and project on, and it's um, there's a good list of new movies coming up this year so that's usually on friday nights i believe and um at mccook so go on up of course admissions free it's our great park that our uh, forefathers uh thought uh, long and hard and and uh, campaigned to purchase uh thanks to the mccook clan the fight mccooks and we're so fortunate that people have the insight um and the, and the intelligence to go out and buy that park and then uh, later on to build that boardwalk that we all seem to be enjoying there's a, a, one event I'll highlight today, and that's the bike and barbecue event going on on October 1st. There's a lot of things coming up, and you want to check the papers. You want to check the Parks and Rec uh, website and their new brochure that came up that, that, that has a calendar of events. There's all sorts of walks for Alzheimer's, for the Terry Broder Walk, a walk across southeastern Connecticut. Um, October 1st is the... Um, Bike and barbecue, it benefits um, historic places in town and uh, natural spaces. So our open spaces and our, our three historic homes will be the beneficiaries of this bicycle um, endurance race, if you will. It's not really a race, it's just a, a, a track, a, a, a trail. And you can take a 100-mile trail if you're a real good biker, uh, I believe a 50, a 25, a 10, and, um, and you all end up back at Rocky Neck uh, parking lot where there'll be a, a gourmet barbecue being put on by the fellows that are building the new uh, barbecue restaurant down at Mega Point uh, to, our, to our east. east. East, that would be Waterford. 
Uh, that's going on on the same night, October 1st, the, Har the Harlem Wizards, which is like the Harlem Globetrotters, um, uh, a funky basketball team that comes out and plays against some uh, local um, business owners and politicians and leaders in our town. I will not be one of them, uh, but that's for a good cause too. That's our youth coalition that is um, uh, focused on um, uh, preventing the abuse of substance abuses in our, in, our, in our youth and in our community. So we want that supported as well. So a whole lot more going on. And um, we will uh, point you again to town calendars, the town website, the Parks and Rec website, school starts. Uh, depending on when you're viewing this, it may have already started. We will, again, caution you, please drive slowly. Remember all those laws that go along with school buses. They're going to slow, our, uh, slow us down a little bit, but it's all for a good cause, the safety of the children in this town. So please obey the law and not pass school buses and, and, uh, and keep your speed to uh, a reasonable speed. Today I have a woman who is, um, wears... A half a dozen hats in our town. She's um, she's really amazing in her in her contributions to our community. Uh, I'm very pleased and honored to have Holly Cheeseman with me today. Hi, Holly. Good afternoon, Mark. Thank you for having me. How's that for an introduction? That sounds pretty good to me. As, yeah, it's as almost like they, you wrote it. They weren't <laughs> expecting someone with six heads. So. Ah, right. So the six-headed monster yeah, that is exactly. uh, Holly Cheeseman. Why did I say that? What? what I, you are the executive director of the Children's Museum of Southeastern Connecticut. Correct. We want to focus on that today, but you also are, are very involved in our community in a number of other ways. Why don't you list them for us? Uh, well, I'm blessed to have been a resident of Niantic since 1990. My husband and I moved here from New Jersey. Uh, I am, as you said, the executive director of the Children's Museum. I'm also president of the East Lyme Library Board of Trustees. I have the privilege of serving with you on the Board of Selectmen, right. a member of the Niantic Bay Yacht Club, and gee, that's all I can that's think about at the all. moment. That's about four or five hats, but that's uh, incredible, incredible what you do in our community, you know, because I, I know as I was a Selectman before I came, became the first Selectman, and that's a job in and of itself. We have ex officio meetings. We have to go go to other committee meetings and, and represent the board of selectmen and let uh, make sure our committees in town, our boards and commissions, are running properly and running within the laws of FOI and points of order, etc. And, and but then you take on and tackle the pretty deep, pretty big job of being the president of the board of trustees of the library. And it, why don't you tell us a couple minutes of that? What's well, that like? It, that, I feel passionately about libraries, as, as you know. Um, when we first moved here, uh, going to the library, going to the story time, we moved here with two young children, was a wonderful way to develop friends in the community, introduce my children to the love of reading, and really start to feel part of this new town. As you know, libraries have evolved so much since then. It's not just a place where you go and take out books. It's an information center. It's a resource for people who may not be um, have the capacity at home to have access to online resources. Nowadays, you can't even apply for a job at uh, one of our major stores without having access to a computer. So we supply that. Uh, if you need help with your iPhone, your iPad, the they technology has yeah. just changed. In addition to having wonderful programs for our children, our young people, the library did a filmmaking series. They were lucky to get a grant and brought a filmmaker in from New Haven. A couple of the films that the middle school students made were actually shown at a film festival in New Haven which was great. Um, we have a great library. We do have a great library. For a small little town. We, and we have a great library because of leaders like yourself. How many people sit on the Board of Trustees of the library? I've been to a few of their meetings. Uh, we ha I think we currently have about 20. We do have That's a amazing. couple of vacancies. Uh, we're always looking for good people. And uh, board members are term limited. You can serve two, three-year terms, and then you have to take some time off. Oh. Don't so. you wish other organizations and uh, parts of uh, our government were yes, that way? Yes, term limits. Yeah. Yes, that's term a limits. subject <laughs> for another day. <laughs> we won't talk yeah. about term limits. Uh, um, <laughs> but, but, but good for you uh, for stepping up and, 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 first of all, having passion 
for the library, but, 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 but not just having passion and going to it and encouraging it, but, but leading it. And it, I know it's a, it's a big job. It's a big job. And it, it runs t- separately from town government, correct? Yes. Uh, it's uh, a, it's the Eastline Library is, yes, is funded by the town government. The state statutes actually set up a couple of different ways for Connecticut libraries to be, to be organized and funded. We do get our funding from the town, but it's a separate board of trustees. Uh, it has its own executive director. Uh, there is a library foundation which exists that can take um, charitable contributions. And that goes really to filling in the gaps. We all know the pressures that are on mm. town government, right. uh, particularly when it comes to right. funding. So the library uh, foundation can make up some of those shortfalls. Indeed, indeed. I know there's one event coming up that you wanted to talk about with the, with the library. Yes, uh, the library in conjunction with the Parks and Recreation Department is launching a story walk at Bridebrook. And what that is, in effect, is uh, a storybook broken down into different stations. So if you're there seeing your 10-year-old play baseball and you're there with your 4-year-old, you can walk around Bride Book and at each station you read a different page of the book. And by the time you make your way around, you've read the whole story. That's awesome. So it's literacy, it's exercise, it's you know doing something fun yeah. with your children, and we're very and excited about that. And it's just another little nugget of, of what makes East Lime special. I mean, that's just a fantastic idea. I mean... Goosebumps, right? Yes. Here. Well, I, mean, and I, awesome. I think it's also a wonderful example of the way town agencies, different organizations in town collaborate to make our town a better place for everyone. Yes, indeed. So then we come to um, you needing a job a couple of years ago and saying, uh, boy, the Children's Museum has an interim position, I know. And so uh, you were put on as interim uh, director, um, and, and lo and behold, you got the permanent job, too. So you're here as my guest today to talk about uh, that specifically. We spent a little bit of time on the library. We'll spend some time maybe in a month or two, talking about your bid to become our next state representative. And that's, uh, yeah, I know you personally. You're a very smart woman. I know you'll represent us well. But you'll get my endorsement later on that. And, and we can talk about state government at some point. Frankly, it, 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 um, it bores me. <laughs> because it's nothing but bad news, it seems. Um, but we've been well represented by State Rep. Uh, Jatil, of course, we are with State Senator Fermika. And I know, um, um, uh, you know, we will be represented well in the future. Um, and, 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 and that's very important stuff because as the state goes, so does East Line. Uh, I like to say we're the best town in, well, I shouldn't say that out loud, uh, in a very tough state uh, economy. Um, But you're here today to talk about the Children's Museum as executive director. And we think about downtown East Lyme, we think about the boardwalk and the the access to the hole in the wall from our main street, which is so special. We we purchased the mobile station, which become a park at the end of the end of Pennsylvania Avenue, which would be our window to the ocean from our main street special between the Black Sheep and the downtown Book Barn and Grace and our movie theater and, of course, you know, the great shops and the great eating establishments all throughout downtown. But there's been a, there's been a constant down there, and it's been there for quite a while, and that's the Children's Museum. And I think it's underrated. It's not an underrated facility, but it's maybe underappreciated or unless you have a four-year-old and you're walking in and, and they're tearing up things. But, we, but that Children's Museum brings so much economic benefit to our town. It creates a, a character down there. It creates a little bit of a soul down there that, you know, it's not just shops and, and restaurants, uh, but it, it, we also have a museum downtown, real special. So tell us about how you were introduced to the Children's Museum and where you are now and where you're going to take the museum. In the, and you got to do that in about 30 seconds. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll talk very quickly. Uh, My first experience with the museum was when I was there with my two sons. Uh, We were among the charter members. The museum will be 25 years old next year. Unbelievable. It started in 1992 by a number of town residents. Uh, Andy Pappas was one, JG&A. Donna Formica was very active. Mm. And when the library moved from its location on Main Street to the community center, these residents who had been thinking about having a children's museum for quite some time 
said to the town, may we use the building? And the Children's Museum of Southeastern Connecticut was born and through a variety of different executive directors and some ups and downs. Uh, there were yeah. some challenging times when the museum was talking about moving to New London. There were challenging times when the recession hit. Uh, but here we are in uh, 2016, one year short of our 25th birthday, and I think stronger and better than ever. Awesome. I was got reinvolved when I joined the board around 2010. Uh, was actually president of the board of trustees for a while. We had a, a terrific executive director who came here from the Children's Museum in West Hartford. Uh, did a great job for a couple of years, and then he was lured away to Texas to run a science museum about five times our size. Well, that's so it was what a, happens. It that was a true. great opportunity yeah. for him. His wife was from Texas. He had young children. You know, couldn't say no. And I was persuaded to step in as interim. I thought, what do I know about running a children's museum? But I guess I knew enough, and about two-thirds of the way through the process, the board was doing a nationwide search. I decided to throw one of my many hats in the ring, and the board offered me the job. Wonderful. And I've been there officially for just over a year now. You were a businesswoman uh, in a prior life, yes. a prior hat that you yes. wore. Um, so you come with skill sets. Um, a skill set, a set of skills that uh, um, probably fit, fit rather nicely. When the board put their wish list together, uh, one of the things they were looking for was someone with a sound business background. Mm -hmm. Because, as I like to say, running a not-for-profit doesn't mean losing money. <laughs> uh, if you don't make enough to keep the doors open, pay the bills, make some investments in your infrastructure, you're not going to last very long. Right. And you need to know about cash flow. You need to know about budgeting and making sure things work out. And I was also lucky, having lived here for so long, I had a lot of contacts. I'd done a lot of development work on other boards. So that you were on the board of directors of the Williams School. I was on the so yeah, board of trustees of the Williams School for, right. for quite a few years. I'm still on the development committee there. Terrific. Uh, and you know, having served in town government yes. and been around for a while, it helps that people will take your phone calls. Uh, and I, yeah, I learned a lot. I'd never written grants before. And our grant writer left about the same time our mm. executive director did. So uh, it was ba baptism by yeah. fire. But we have a fabulous education coordinator, Amy Boudreau. Right. And this year, she and I have written grants. And we have taken in so far over $87,000 in grant funding. Wonderful. Good for you. We get no local, state, or federal funding. Right. So wow. we pay for the museum with memberships, with admissions with grants, uh, and with our off-site programming. Terrific. So. Tell me uh, briefly, if, uh, if I were to walk in the door today, what would be uh, some of the, ex the more exciting exhibits that are in there? Because they're always changing. Yeah. You explained that to me earlier, and we talked about how you formulate these uh, in an off-site location. But you have some really exciting uh, exhibits. So if you go in the front door, and you take a right, you'll enter our discovery room, which is our sort of hands-on, inquiry-based science room. Uh, you'll see uh, a great new animal enclosure. We actually have live critters. Oh. Uh, we have a bearded dragon, a Russian tortoise, two Australian tree frogs, land hermit crabs, and a leopard gecko named Loki. I'm really fond of the gecko. Yeah, uh, you, you gonna, love the gecko. I'm just going to throw that yeah, out yes, there. Yes, of course. Yeah, He's, yeah. He is charming. Uh, we have a creation station where you can go to the front desk and get a variety of kits. These are particularly good for older children. Very mm -hmm. often you get a family that comes in with a four-year-old and an eight-year-old. Right. So they can build things. Uh, we have our maxi rollaway. You can make your own uh, sort of roller coaster okay. and a variety of fun hands-on activities. If you take a left, you're in the imagination station. We have our fishing boat, uh, Brio 
train table, our Global Bazaar and Cafe, our fire engine. Now, I'm a big the fan I of the tell fire you, engine. I'm a big fan. Where was that when I was a four year old yeah. kid and wanted to be a fireman? Um, still do. Um, uh, that was sponsored specifically the, by a company, right? Got shipments uh, mm. who do a lot of the work with our fire department uh, had this demo model awesome. and said, we don't have room for it anymore. Would you like it? Uh, flashing lights, siren. <laughs> you can put on a little fire outfit. Didn't fit uh, me. Yeah. No. Just saying. Uh, we have a weather station and we have a toddler area. That's awesome. And that's inside. Outside, we have water play, a climbing mall, a tree house that was designed by museum patrons, zip line, uh, raised garden beds where we grow food for our animals, nice. uh, outdoor uh, instruments you can play. So, and all for just seven dollars admission. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I, I travel throughout the state as. as as you have to in this job and um, end up talking to a whole lot of people in the state. And I, um, very often people will stop me and, or bring up the discussion about what a gem it is because they bring, and it, so the, my, my point is people, not just from East Lyme, Niantic, and, and friends and family visiting show up there, but it's throughout the state, it's an, or at least throughout this side of the state, it's, a, it's an attraction that brings people to our downtown. Uh, it puts us on the map, if you will, um, in, in that genre, in, in that demographic. We, um, when we look at our visitor, we have close to 30,000 visitors a year. Amazing. We have almost uh, 1,000 members. We get people from all over the country, as you say. Families come in, visiting grandparents mm. or something like that. We also have great outreach to our military community. Thanks to uh, subsidy from the Electric Boat Employees Community Service Association, we offer um, reduced price memberships for military, reduced admission price. Uh, we're going to be offering free admission to veterans and their families on Veterans Day. And we have a lot of military members, and That's we are wonderful. so pleased to be able to recognize yeah. them by offering them those special rates. That's terrific. What's coming up at the Children's Museum? Well, we next week, uh, although we would love to see you, we're entering our annual uh, shutdown week where we close the museum. It tends to be a slower week anyway because back of back to school. Sure. Uh, we will be finishing up a couple of exhibits, uh, putting some new exhibits in. Can you announce them? Uh, we're or? finishing up our, our animal in, new animal enclosure, okay. uh, putting some final finishing touches on our creation station, uh, doing some significant work in our classroom where we do some of our on-site programming to make it even better for our visitors and our teachers. And then coming up after that, not sure how much we're going to get done, we're going to have a new light room with all sorts of exciting um, bubble tube, a light table, mm. a light bright. That's going to be something nice. new. And stay tuned. We have some we have some exciting things coming up. Oh, can't, I'm looking for an exclusive here on this TV show for the. We're trying to bump the ratings up a little bit. No, no exclusives well, we, right we, now. Well, we we are talking to <laughs> one of our very very uh, loyal supporters. Um, you don't have to yeah, say Yeah, about putting another new exhibit in. Awesome. This, so. I, there's always new things coming. Yes. So, uh, um, listen, there's a lot of grandparents in East Lyme, uh, you know, uh, as, as, uh, as we also have a lot of great families. And it's a great asset for all of our regions we've talked about. But if you're a grandparent out there, you have to take your kid, your grandkids to the Children's Museum. And then, you know, become a member. Support our support our uh, Children's Museum of Southeastern Connecticut downtown. Uh, you have a fundraiser coming up, and I had the privilege of going to it last year, even being the head auctioneer. And I, I hate to disappoint you, Mark, but you don't have to do it again this year. We are going, Joe Fury, I know, I know. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious, yes. I just got the boot? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Fury, the weatherman from Channel 5, is okay. going to be our auctioneer MC. He better raise as much money as I raised. Well, we've year. told him that. <laughs> you set a very high bar. Yeah, I did. We did. We, we did. did. We, we did. did. We were very lucky. 
What's the date on that? It's October 7th. October 7th. Is, which is, is a Friday night from 6 to 10 p.m. at the Niantic Bay Yacht Club. And we packed it last year. So if we people did. want tickets, we need to get them, you need to get them early. Yes. Because uh, yes. literally, I mean, we've heard this before. I'll get them early. They'll sell out. They do. And it's, you know, that's a small, it's a smaller room. Uh, so by all means, when you see that they're available... You can go to gala at cmsect.org or look on our website for information or call 860-691-1111. 691-1111. How did you get that number? That's I don't know. Number. We locked out. So, um, again, we're not talking about your campaign right now. You are running for state rep of, of this district, um, which would be Salem and, and Waterford. Salem and East Lyme. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Waterford. Yeah, that would be Salem and East Lyme. Um, um, we'll have you back and we'll talk about some state issues, um, important state issues. And uh, obviously you're very talented, very intelligent, very engaged in our community. Uh, thank you for all that you do. And, uh, and thank you for bringing some uh, better insight on what goes on behind those purple doors at the Children's Museum. It's a great asset. It's a great, uh, great thing that we have on our Main Street. We appreciate everything that uh, you and your staff do. Well, thank you. And, and as you say, I think we're a focal point for Main Street. We offer uh, uh, beach passes. So if you come in the summer, we buy two beach passes from our wonderful Parks and Rec Department, and you can borrow them. You go out, come to the museum, go to the beach for a few hours, come out. We are constantly getting, you know, I'm here with my kids. Yeah. Where should I go eat? What else should yeah. I do in town? And we try and keep that information at the ready. That's neat. The, I think it must be 10 or 15 years ago when the Yale Charette came in and did the study. They found at that point 30% of the traffic of, in downtown Niantic was driven by the Children's Museum. That's terrific. So. Of course, we have more traffic now. There's all sorts mm -hmm. of things that going on downtown. But again, thank you. Holly Cheeseman was my guest today, is my guest, and will be again my guest. She's uh, a pretty terrific woman. She's uh, one of those people that make East Lyme happen and make it special. So thank you for being here today. My name is Mark Nickerson, your first selectman in East Lyme. This was Issues and Answers. If you have an idea for a show, mnickerson at eltownhall.com. We'd love to hear from you or your comments. Until next time, Issues and Answers signing off for now. Take care.